so this chapter is about uh, system integrity and uh, this is the third foundational requirement so basically uh, it says that ensure the integrity of the iacs or in instrumentation and automation control system to prevent unauthorized manipulation so here we will talk about how to ensure the integrity of our iacs environment so providing data security includes protecting the confidentiality integrity and availability of data at rest and data in transit so what is data at rest whatever data is in uh, rest position so we can say it is a data at rest uh, we'll study about that you can see like uh, if a plc program code or robot programs or uh, computer aided uh, draft cad files or computer aided manufacturing files uh, operating manuals and uh, documentation electrical diagrams network diagrams historical production data so all these things are called data at rest then uh, data in transit it is uh, information flows from ot security domain to other security domains and the connections between security domains are monitored so any data whatever is flowing in the traffic that is data in transit uh, technologies like data diodes, firewalls and access control list can be used to restrict the information flow. So uh, these can be monitored by, by, by putting these type of devices where uh, they have capability to see this uh, information flow, to restrict the information flow also. So this is what we are saying that providing data security including protecting the confidentiality, integrity and availability of data at rest and data in transit protecting assets after removal and preventing data leak. So this is a complete life cycle. We need to protect data from its initial phase to the end phase of the life cycle of that data. So use of cryptography can support data security, of course. So whenever we will talk about confidentiality or integrity, cryptography will always kick in. So cryptography can support data security. We'll study how it is cryptography and how it can be done. So encryption, digital signatures, hashing and other cryptographic functions are available to prevent unauthorized access or modification of data. So we'll use encryption of the files, encryption of the communication, then digital signature for authentication, uh, hashing uh, for checking the integrity of the file and other functions are also available. So let's move to the next. So this is about the encryption. So what is encryption? We'll take one file, we'll uh, add some cipher code and then a cipher text, then your uh, original message will become a encrypted message. So basically uh, there are two types of encryption. One is symmetric, other is asymmetric. There are more, but we'll discuss the basic these two here, symmetric key and asymmetric key. So what happens? We take one message here, original message, then uh, there is a symmetric key and we apply encryption it becomes a cipher text so you cannot read this is non non readable you cannot read and see uh, it's not understood by uh, humans as well so then again you need to uh, once you can transfer these files through uh, any communication channel to the sender uh, receiver then once the receiver receives this file he will use the same symmetric key to open decrypt that file and once it is decrypted, then he can read the original message. So your message during the transit or during the rest, it remains in a cipher text. It, it will remain in a such a format that uh, it cannot be read by everyone. It can be only read by those person, those individual or those programs who have the symmetric key. If they do not have the symmetric key, they cannot open and read this uh, file. So this is one uh, type of encryption which uses symmetric key method. Now uh, asymmetric key. What is asymmetric key? It has a two pair of keys. In place of like in symmetric key we saw that the same key is with the sender as well as receiver. But asymmetric key what happens we have a, a message. We you encrypt it using the public key and then it converts into the cipher text and then we use a private key to open the decryption file and then decrypt it and then message can be readable so what is happening here these two keys are distinct keys and this is not same key so uh, only the people or the individual or the program who has this private key they can read this thing so there is a two different pairs of keys so in case of public key is lost, nothing can happen. Like only people can encrypt it. But in case of uh, if only private key is uh, lost, then there is a case of uh, a thread that anyone can read that 
or someone who has this private key he can read that uh, message once he know that it is coming from this sender and this is the message but in this case what happens symmetric key was used for encryption and decryption for both thing so in case symmetric key is lost he can do encryption and decryption of that message so this is a basic encryption principle what happens so moving ahead uh, these are some recommendations so critical ot data should be protected uh, while in transit especially over third party network segments and other untrusted or vulnerable network paths so we need to find where what are our vulnerable path or untrusted network so whatever is not in our control like if um, not in our full control that is called untrusted so if the communication is going over cellular communication or wireless communication or internet or wan then those communication need to be protected using encryption first identify which data is critical also we need to put our efforts where the there is a requirement and data is critical or data is a confidential one then implement cryptographic mechanisms that is encryption to prevent unauthorized access or modification of system data and audit records like as we understood in previous slide that if we encrypt our data it will become unreadable format in both cases and no one can understand what is in that what is in that payload and what is in that data so it will prevent any unauthorized access or modifications of the system data or even the logs if you have stored at a some place if it is encrypted then no one can alter the logs or the contents of the logs whatever is stored there encryption provides a mechanism for ensuring confidentiality and integrity for data in transit as well as in rest so encryption if you encrypt your data it will provide confidentiality because it is in cipher text and we can, it cannot reveal anything so you will un, uh, no one can read anything so that will provide confidentiality as well as integrity that it cannot be changed by anyone so by implementing those solutions we we will ensure the integrity of ics to prevent any unauthorized manipulation and thus we can fulfill the foundational requirement as asked in the uh, as asked by the 62443 requirement so that's all about the system integrity let's move to the next topic